Praise the Lord. Okay, um, I'm going to talk about now um, the reasons for the extremeness of the parables. The reason for the extremeness in the parables, okay? Now, I know there's a few scriptures in there that make the gospel seem so simple. And under a certain light, under extreme places, it can be simple, you know? Like when the guy's ready to stick a sword in his, in his chest, the jailer, and the only thing required, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, okay? Just keep in mind that not everybody has a sword against their chest, so not everybody's going to hear that same word. The, the true word of God come to let people know what must happen and um, it's always, you know, it always fits, it always fits the bill at the moment, okay? And on the, and on the cross, the guy has a very s simple message, today that shalt thou be with me in paradise, remember me, that's all he said, you know, and you can say remember me now, Lord right now and continue on your way and, and he will remember you, you know, remember you re rejecting him, so it's not the same message across the board. So reason for the extremeness in the parables, Jesus preached about the kingdom of heaven a lot in the in the book of Matthew, and um, he makes it pretty clear that uh, that the cost to eternal life is quite radical. Okay, it's quite uh, maybe maybe not costly as far as one sense, but it's a, it's a it's a it's a dropping of oneself associated with this world. Why? Because this world is under a government that is anti God. Okay, the true God wanted this earth to be an extension of heaven, but it's not an extension of heaven anymore. It's been tainted because of sin, and the devil has a set up his government because of sin. Death comes, and <clears throat> the king of death, the devil, seeks that you want to kill. He's a, it's all death and back, backwards and opposite of God, Jesus' is life. He set up his death life on this earth. It's opposite of God opposite of the Lord Jesus Christ because he wanted the throne of God. He's kicked out. He's trying to set up his own kingdom here on this earth. And if we're a part of this kingdom of this earth, no matter how positive it might sound under some lights, it is anti-God. So that's why the cost he tries to describe in parables, the extremeness. So it's like, why, why the extremeness? Why does it have to be such a rejection of this world? If you don't lose your life, you'll never find it. If you try to save your life, you'll lose it. You know, it's, it seems opposite because you can't, it's not about positivity anymore. It's about Jesus. Okay? Jesus is positive if you take a broad scope, but if you have a very narrow scope of only looking at the world, which is owned and ruled by Satan, you're not going to be able to understand what's going on after, okay? And we are only people, we only last around 80 years. That's about the lifespan for people. That's a little on the high side, okay? The average lifespan is about 80 years and our bodies will decay and go go back to the grave, go back to the dust, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And um, after that happens, eternity begins. So when you take a look at the big scope of the picture, you're gonna realize that The cost is extreme to come from where you were, part of this system, to go to the other system. Okay, you're changing, you're changing kingdoms. When you come to Jesus, you're changing kingdoms for a, for a temporal or eternal. Okay, that's that's the deal. You're you're exchanging a temporal thing that you're guaranteed to lose for an eternal one that you can't lose. So the deal is quite obvious when you get an eternal perspective. The, um, the, the choice to be made is very simple. So it might sound like a, a big cost, but consider the other one and it's, it's, it's always much wiser. So the thing is, God's trying to get your head into heaven and onto Jesus, so you will not focus on the things right here. Because if you do, and people start talking about Jesus and the outcomes of their conclusions, it's gonna seem very negative and very hateful and very ridic ridiculous. It's not ridiculous to those who've got their head in heaven, okay? You get your mind on the prize, like Jesus said to do, like Paul said to do, then you're not going to have a problem wanting to focus on heaven. You're not going to want to. You're not going to have a problem trying to defocus on the things of this world. Okay, the things of this world are going to pass. They're temporal. Things of the temporal is not is not worth your time. If you can see it, it's temporal. If you can't see it, it's eternal. Okay, um, that's what we're supposed to be focusing on: the eternal. Amen. We're children of the kingdom of God now. We're born into his family. For those that have turned to Jesus for real, you're on your way to heaven. And we're supposed to be seeking the things that are above, okay? About a kingdom that is, uh, 
The kingdom that is builder and maker is God, okay? It's not made by hands, it's God. We, we don't see it with our physical eyes, but you have an understanding and a knowing somewhere inside of you, in your spirit. It is, it's a quickening of the Holy Spirit to remind you that you're, you're, not, you're not in your home yet. We're just pilgrims passing through, okay? Remember that? So you don't get discouraged thinking, I don't have anything going on. You don't want anything going on. You only want what's going on here, what God is allowing, okay? What about enjoying your life? <laughs> like I said, we're not living for here. And your, your, your strength and your joy does not come from situations going on here. Yes, there is wiseness that you can use to, to, to make things a little smoother on earth. But um, that's the language of the people in America because not everybody can do that. There's a lot of systems around this na uh, the nations that are not the same and things just don't pan out right all the time. <laughs> there are some situations that are very difficult for folks around the earth. But for those in America, yeah, there's things, that, a lot of the things that we can just do, keep things smooth and on the up and up, and, and then still be right on the path with God. Ultimately, keep your head in heaven. The extremeness for the cost is because we're talking about transferring kingdoms, okay? We're transferring from one kingdom here that has been bought over by the devil. He, he inherited it because of sin. And he is the opponent of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we remain here, we are born into this earth, we remain here, we remain in a kingdom that is going down, and we remain in a kingdom that is opposing the true Christ, and we are ultimately setting ourselves up. That's why we need to be born again. This, this kingdom, this earth right now, has been taken over by the opponent of Jesus Christ, okay? So if you think you're born perfect the first time, I don't care whether you're born perfect or you're born whatever. Sin is in the earth, and we're born into a kingdom that is anti-Christ, and you, you cannot help it. If you if you think of this, this system right here as Christ, you're calling good evil and evil good, okay? It's not about niceness. It's not about kindness. Those things do show up in a holy life, yes, as well, but the difference is one of us is born of a kingdom of heaven, and one of us are only born of a kingdom of this earth. The extremists for the, the words of the parables, transferring kingdoms. End of the deal. Amen? Praise the Lord. God bless you.